Hi, I'm Sonja Englert. Welcome to my airplane design tutorial number 20 on airplane design resources. I want to follow up on my two previous videos on loads and structures and provide you with information on where to find further resources that can help you design an airplane. Designing a new airplane is a lot of work. Most companies that do that have to spend millions and years of time to come up with a good airplane. So is it even worth thinking about doing this on your own? Maybe. Designing an experimental, one-of-a-kind airplane is certainly less costly than designing an airplane for certification and production. Every successful production airplane today is the result of an evolution. The designers have taken something that already works and made it better. Engineers use proven concepts, components, materials or systems and combine them with a few new things, which can be geometry, a new engine, higher weight, different materials or equipment. That reduces the number of iterations it takes to get from a prototype to a production version. As a rule, the more new things com you combine and the more complex the end result is, the longer is the process. Your choice and it still requires specialized knowledge that can take years to ex acquire. If you do not already have that knowledge, you have three options. People in the first category use an existing airplane design and modify and improve it in small ways that do not change the primary structure and stay within its established operating limitations, which means weight, load factors and speed. Many people do that and have successfully created their own fairly unique airplane. You fall into the second category if you pursue a completely new design. The easiest way to get to something that is outside of the envelope is to work out as many details as you can yourself, then hire an experienced engineer to help you with either checking your results or do the analysis for you. To do the loads and structural analysis takes some time, but the really time-consuming task about designing an airplane is detail design, which actually many people are good at without much training, just from having looked at a lot of existing airplanes and how they are built. That needs to go hand in hand with the analysis. Define the geometry first and make a three-view drawing of your project. Select the materials and construction methods then go from there into the details. But despite best intentions, maybe only one out of ten projects that get started makes it to first flight. The third category involves taking the most difficult path, which is to do everything yourself, and that includes learning how to be an engineer. If you are not willing or able to put in the years of work to learn, then stick with an existing airplane design and build a kit or from plans. The number of successful new projects that fall into this category are few and far apart. If you just want to fly, but think it would be cheaper to come up with your own airplane rather than buy one, forget it. It is far more expensive to design, build and test an airplane than to buy an existing one, where the design cost is spread out over the number of airplanes sold for that model. If you want to go the cheap route, Find a project and finish, rebuild or overhaul it yourself. On the other hand, if you like the process of being creative, there is nothing wrong with trying. It can be fun to learn new things. For those that fall into the second and third category, keep watching. There are quite a few resources available for free that can help you learn more about airplane design. When I work on an airplane design, I collect the data needed for the loads analysis in an airplane data table. This is a spreadsheet that has all the details on the airplane geometry, weights, engine data, airfoils, speed and load factor limitations. Here is the blank form, which will be customized to match the particular airplane. It is very useful to have all this data in one place. If you ask me to help you with an airplane design project, the first thing I, uh, I will ask you is to fill out as much as you can of this airplane data sheet. This is your wish list. It may get modified as the design evolves. Send me an email and I, I will send you the blank table. 
A lot of the data in the table just comes from a three view drawing. Other data is calculated from the dimensions and weights. I have already presented some of the formulas in my previous videos. Others can be found in a number of free resources that are available online. You may not think of it that way, but the airworthiness requirements for certified airplanes contain quite a lot of information that you can make use of, because they are an accumulation of lessons learned from the past about what works and is safe. I want to show you a few examples here. In the video on loads, I mentioned 14 CFR Part 23, which contains the airworthiness requirements used in the US for certifying small airplanes. In it, you can find an extensive list of things you need to consider when designing an airplane, along with many formulas to calculate loads and other things. When you download it from the FAA website, Make sure you use an amendment that is older than Amendment 64, because a lot of the useful details were removed from Amendment 64 and on. Here are a few examples on what is in there. Requirements for flight performance and handling qualities, and which conditions to test. You can find simple formulas here for the design airspeeds and the limit load factors for different categories. You can go higher with either, but you should not go lower than these. Stick forces, what loads to use for an engine mount design and test, what loads to use in a control system test, load factors used for attachment of mass balance to control surfaces, how much ground clearance and clearance to other structure a propeller should have to avoid damage, how to perform engine cooling test and corrections for different OATs, how hot the air for the carburetor heat needs to be to be effective to prevent icing, acceptable firewall materials, minimum instrumentation, flight and engine instruments for different kinds of operation, where to use circuit breakers or fuses, information that needs to be in your flight manual. Certified airplanes have to meet all the requirements. For US experimentals, this is optional. If you live in a country that is more restrictive for experimental airplanes than the US, you may be required to comply with most, if not all, requirements found in the applicable regulations, which considerably increases the amount of work and paperwork to get permission to fly. So look up what is needed beforehand. If you are not overwhelmed by the requirements and things that need to be considered when designing a good airplane, keep going. Other useful documents that can be found on the FAA website are advisory circulars. These contain helpful airplane design and testing information. Here are a few examples. Advisory circular AC23-16 Power Plant Guide. This contains important tips on designing the fuel system, how to perform a fuel flow test, and how the unusable fuel is determined. And my favorite, AC 23-8 Flight Test Guide. Here you can find all the explanations and procedures for flight testing an airplane, including home builds, in addition to definitions and the formulas used for data reduction. If you live in the US and are building an experimental airplane, there is one AC that you have to read completely. It contains nothing directly related to airplane design. Instead, it takes you in detail through the regulatory process on how to get from a pile of airplane material to a flying machine with an airworthiness certificate. This is AC20-27, Certification and Operation of Amateur Built Aircraft. Because there are many different categories of airplane, like LSA, ultralights in their various definitions, gliders and helicopters, there are many different airworthiness standards. Pick the ones that are the most applicable to your project for review. The European equivalent to 14 CFR 23 is called CS23 and is published by IASA on their website in English. Most of it is the same, except for minor details as the FAA requirements. The glider airworthiness standards CS22 
contain some useful details even for airplanes. An example is the procedure how to determine the best lap belt attach points that minimize injury during a crash. Here it's called the H-point procedure. There is also a template for a flight manual that you can use to develop one for your project. Or the requirements that a motor glider has to meet to be able to tow gliders. As a note, I have translated CS22 into German for those that prefer working in that langu language. Contact me if you need that. Let's move on to structures. I am often asked about how to design structural elements of an airplane. This is really something that requires a strong engineering background. And even if you are an engineer, but do not already have experience with analyzing airplane structures, it is safest not to do this all, of, all on your own. Because weight is critical in airplanes and most parts are thin-walled, failure modes usually include instability. This means that if you're used to using material properties like the tensile strength of aluminum, you will have to th rethink the process to include critical stresses for buckling. Nowadays, engineers have the option to use software, particularly 3D CAD and FEM, which is finite element analysis for design. Both is useful, but if you want to do something fast for a simple airplane, it is most of the time easier and quicker to stick with 2D drawings and hand analysis procedures for loads and structures. For people that want to do this kind of work more than once, it makes more sense to learn the complicated software, which can take as much time as designing the airplane with simple tools. Designing a heavy airplane is easy. If you are not sure about the analysis, just add a little extra material to be on the safe side. Do that for every part of the airplane and you end up with something that has a useful load that is less than your own weight. That is why designing something that has an empty weight limit or a gross weight limit, like an ultralight, is actually harder to design than anything else. Every pound of weight saved comes at a higher cost than the pound of weight that remains on the airplane. If you really do want to learn something, or a lot, about analyzing airplane, airplane structures, I recommend this book by Brun, which you can find online for free. It is called Analysis and Design of Flight Vehicle Structures. It covers the basics and advanced analysis, and even though it is mostly geared towards metal airplanes, the methods it provides are comprehensive and are all suitable for hand analysis and simple spreadsheets. I have to warn you, it has more than 800 pages. Still interested? Give it a try! There is a lot of other airplane design information available online, so the only limit is how much time you want to spend on it. Go for it, but don't forget to have fun!